Dear friends, we have been catapulted into a new way of living. And it, it was not our choice. It came out of the blue. And it can feel somewhat like riding a roller coaster that you did not choose and neither did your loved ones. However, even during these turbulent times, God is faithful. He is at work. Initially, I had quite a few wobbly moments, and I believe we've all had them. It is difficult to juggle homeschooling, working from home, the emotions and, and feelings of your children and your spouse, the yearning to make contact with friends and family. I sometimes felt almost zombie-like like I was purely existing by putting one foot in front of the other. But now, slowly, my inner being is coming back to life. And it, it definitely, all of this definitely changed my perspective. And hear me out. Ordinary things that I'd taken for granted in my busyness are suddenly little lush gifts. I close my eyes and savour a gentle breeze across my face. I'd stare in wonder at a bee collecting nectar from a soft pink blossom. Uh, a bug pushing a blade of grass that seems a whole new shade of green. I wouldn't just see the colours of my children's eyes. I'd see the subtle flecks in their irises. A song wouldn't just move me, it would make me sob. It rained sometime last week and um, I went out to stand in it. I held my head back and I allowed it to bathe my face, washing away the invisible stains of a hundred tears. I'm not only reading scripture, I am reciting it and reflecting on it, memorizing it, breathing it in. And I, I wish I could hang on to that vivid awareness of life forever. Um, it's almost a divine perspective. But soon we'll be back to life as normal or as usual. And I sincerely hope that you and I We'll learn from this, our vivid awareness of what can be seen, noticing every single bless, a blessing, large or small, and to, to draw near, to draw near to the, to the unseen hand that holds us, that keeps us safe, that guides us and raises us up. Allow me, allow me to read with you from 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 to 9, and verses 16 to 18, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And then verse 16 to 18. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. 
for the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. When we read scriptures this week, let us believe them with the same spirit of faith that Paul is talking about. Uh, think of the process as us inhaling. Then when you speak them, when you speak them out loud, think of it as exhaling. Nothing supplies more divine oxygen on, on your journey than, than breathing in scripture by faith. Subsequently, nothing applies power to your feet like breathing scripture out through speech. Try it this week. If you're not already doing so, breathe in the word. Practice it. Read it, believing it and receiving it by faith and then speak it aloud with boldness. Countless segments of await you in the Bible that can give you spiritual CPR when life is almost breaking you. Let us pray. God, we are pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We feel like we, we are hunted down, but thank you that you never abandon us. We are knocked down by all of this, but, but your mercy and grace, by your mercy and grace, Lord, we are not destroyed. Thank you so much. Help us to never give up, to be resilient. Thank you for renewing our senses, our perspective, and our spirits every day. Open our eyes, Lord, to see, to see your vast kingdom and remind us in our daily activities to keep your presence and power in the forefront of our minds. Divert our gaze. Divert our gaze, Lord Jesus, from the problems and issues that we can see to the root which lies hidden behind them, so that we may overwhelmingly conquer through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thanks. Let me share the remarkable poetic tweet that I saw on Twitter with you, and it inspired today's devotion. Drag barely beating heart, dulled by woes and foes, and scarred by worldly flames of eye, to your God awaiting, and there, by unseen hand, be raised. Thank you. Have a lovely day.